Dr. Kleber. Thank you for the organizers. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome uh, Professor Lixing Zhang, who is the director of the State Key Laboratory of Bioreactor Engineering School of Biotechnology, East China University of Science and Technology. Uh, Dr. Zhang has received his PhD from the Institute of Applied Ecology, Chinese Academy of Sciences, and his postdoctoral fellowship from Emory University in the United States of America. Dr. Zhang has also the experience of working in three pharmaceutical companies in the USA, which is the Synergy, CTEC, and Microbia. He has published seven books, more than 200 papers, including one in the prestigious Nature Journal, and he holds 28 Chinese patents and 16 PCT patents. His uh, Avamectin project has won the National Award in China for Excellence to Improve Science and Technologies and was published in PNAS. He is the Editor-in-Chief for Synthetic and Systems Biotechnology, and Associate Editor for Applied Microbiology and Biotechnology, another prestigious journal, as well as a member of the editorial board for several peer-reviewed journals. He has trained more than 50 postdocs, PhD, and master's students from more than 10 different countries. We are honored to have you with us today, uh, Dr. Lixin. Uh, can we just uh, start uh, the uh, presentation? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Padma, for your nice introduction. It's my great honor to participate in this uh, conference. And uh, due to time shift difference, I only participated several sessions, but I'm very impressed about the quality of this uh, conference. So congratulations for the excellent job. Thank you, sir. Um, Can we just uh, have your video on, sir, because the participants would like oh, to see you okay. too, if possible. Let's see. Okay, this is like my my camera has some problem. Oh, so, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. maybe I just use. Uh, let's see. Yeah, if it's possible. Otherwise, uh, we'll just proceed with the presentation. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, the topic of my talk is uh, revolutionize the fermentation industry through intelligent biomanufacturing. Um, you know, intelligent biomanufacturing is a trademark we recently uh, get the, uh, approved and it's originally designed by my uh, student. Can you see my cursor? Yes, sir, we can, yes, we sir, can we see. Can. We can see, okay. we can see the good. cursor. Very good. Just that your voice is not very much audible. Uh, it's slightly feeble. If oh, okay. You can increase. How about now? Yeah. Then, yes. Okay. Good. So look at this uh, tree mark. You know, the future fermentation tank reactor could look like this ball. You know, instead of being filled, actually it can generate uh, energy and um, glory. So the strings in the fermentation reactor, the shape look like uh, this uh, pain with beautiful DNA-like uh, tails. So that means um, the string can be written with uh, the information of our knowledge and the predictions. And so here you can, if you're interested in uh, the work we're doing in the lab, please uh, uh, check this uh, website. And uh, if you have WeChat account, uh, this number is my WeChat uh, number, also my cell phone number. And here is my uh, email address. So I'm also honored um, to serve as a two terms of president for International Chemical Biology Society. And the most recent uh, annual conference actually was held in India, uh, Hyderabad. Um, I'm honored to uh, have excellent co-workers and colleagues in the past from India, uh, like a professor Siddhartha Roy is on the editorial, is on the scientific board of uh, uh, ICBS. And he's also in charge of uh, communication uh, committee. And within that, you can see uh, Dr. Karthik. So he 
uh, served two years postdoc in my lab. And with his excellent work, when the pandemic uh, break out this year, we can quickly respond. And uh, based on, you know, this, hello? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear okay, you, sir. Good. We can yes, hear you. Sure. So you can see Karthik is the one of the co-authors for this uh, nature communication um, paper. And based on his uh, excellent contribution, we quickly developed a COVID-19 detection case. Not only we can detect RNA nuclear acids, but also we can detect the antibody from the host either human or other uh, organisms. So our case gets uh, approval and the certification from United States and the European Union. Uh, I hope our case can also contribute um, to Indians you know, um, work if you are interested. Talk with uh, uh, Dr. Karthik and you see, we have another uh, trademark for this technology. We also have patents associated with it. And due to time constraint, I will not talk about that aspect. Our major focus might talk on the synthetic biology aspect. So we are at the beginning of a biotechnology industrial revolution. And from the first talk uh, from my uh, friend, John, uh, Kimber, you can see we are in a great stage because the biotechnology, uh, synthetic biology, engineering biology wave just to start. At the same time, we're also in the worst uh, stage. Uh, you can see the pollution, environmental problems give us a, a great headache and challenge. Uh, fortunately, one technology that can accelerate the transition to a global bioeconomy is synthetic biology. I'm sure you have learned a lot from this uh, uh, conference about synthetic biology. In 2017, uh, we are invited to publish uh, uh, our theory, uh, how to do a synthetic biology in fermentation industry we summarize that as a 5M strategy, uh, standing for mining, modeling, manipulation, measurement, and uh, manufacturing. Uh, I will give some uh, detailed um, articulation about this uh, 5M strategy later. So our mission is to do a convergence innovation uh, to streamline the upstream um, microbial stream biointelligence with midstream uh, bioprocess intelligence and downstream purification um, intelligence. So we try our best to increase three parameters, which is uh, yield, productivity, and titers. So, Through long-term evolution, about 3.5 billion years of evolution, microbial strains already reach an equilibrium. Okay, they use the energy and precursor to pro produce much biomass for their own survival, only produce very little amount of uh, secondary metabolites. Some of them are good drugs in, um, in clinic use today. Uh, so how, how to convert or make a transition, um, enable microbes produce much more products for the benefit of human beings while only maintain very little amount of uh, biomass. So here we use uh, synthetic biology and process engineering, particularly 5M strategy to realize the dream. 
So uh, we have published uh, two nature biotechnology papers uh, this year and uh, um, late last year. Uh, so you can see the, the normal phenotype is the microbial strain uh, use the precursor and uh, energy source majorly for TCA cycle to produce enough bell mass for their own survival and only have very little amount of uh, uh, flux going for uh, microbial drugs. And right now, we made the transition to enable the microbes uh, only maintain very low amount of TC cycle while push all the flux go to the microbial drug uh, productions. If you look at this uh, figure, the X axis stands for time, Y axis stands for the yield. You can see while the precursor glucose is keep decreasing, the cell mass starts uh, reaching equilibrium. And only during this stage, when primary metabolism uh, exhausted, while the secondary metabolism started, especially for polyketide microbial drugs. Okay, so what could be the molecular mechanism for this uh, transition? And we figured out in this uh, Nature Biotechnology paper, so we can uh, make the flux, you know, originally uh, go to TC cycle majorly. Uh, we can make this happen to convert those uh, flux go to microbial drugs uh, productions. So I'll give you a detailed um, presentation later. Um, so right now I have to uh, tell you the story about 2015 Nobel Prize um, winners. So even though actually the prize also went to two natural products. One is uh, artemisinin, the other one is Avermectin. Although Professor Yu Yu Tu and her co-workers originally discovered artemisinin, but if you look at the intellectual properties, patents, and the market size, China did not make a fortune. On the other hand, on the contrary, Avermectin was originally discovered by Professor Satoshi Umra and, and uh, his collaborator, Dr. William Campbell in Merck. And Merck dominates the market for Avermectin production. But using our patents, right now China becomes only country in the world exclusively produce Avermectins. And uh, we have more than 160 patents. So in 2015, I published a nature paper majorly about artemisinin. And through more than 10 years of work, we received a national award for Avermectin um, project. So for artemisinin, here is the chemical structure. Uh, the endoproxide formation uh, the group is uh, essential for the anti-malaria uh, activity of artemisinin. Uh, Professor Yu Yu Tu is very good at uh, uh, literature search. She found this recipe from an ancient book. Okay, so um, inspired by this uh, a book, she used the uh, Eason extraction uh, method to maintain the endoproxide uh, group because they are very label, labile for uh, heat and acid treatment. Okay, so, but if you, you know, use all the uh, cultivatable uh, field to grow this uh, plant is not enough uh, supply for um, malaria patients. 
So Jake Hisling uh, tried to use a synthetic biology approach to develop a, a micro and produce artemisinin. He spent more than 10 years with um, 100 million US dollars from Gates Foundation, but he only get uh, the precursor of artemisinin, which is the uh, artemisinin acid without this uh, endoperoxide because the enzyme responsible for this reaction has not been found yet. So we just hypothesize maybe the enzyme come out from um, the microbes, you know, uh, grow with the plant. Okay, so fortunately we found a similar enzyme uh, responsible for the endoproxide uh, formation for a similar uh, compound. So the paper was published uh, in Nature. And we not only crystallized this uh, uh, enzyme, we also figured out the biochemical mechanisms. But when we put this uh, uh, enzyme into microbial strains, it did not function, okay? Because microbes are very uh, smart. They will use, uh, they will only use uh, this, uh, the, the foreign uh, enzymes or elements when it is needed. Okay. Um, so how to, you know, push or drag these microbes use this uh, um, enzyme? We realize actually it also catalyzes alpha keto growth rate, you know, and convert that into succinate acid. So immediately, people will realize actually they are the important component of TCA cycles. Okay, so if we now count the enzymes, the string will die because TCA cycle will not function. So at this moment, we put a relatively easy enzyme called DALCS, responsible for converting penicillin to 780CA. So the strong desire to survive make the micro, okay, use any possible ways to bypass, you know, alpha glutarate to succinic acid. Um, so that enabled this uh, biochemical reaction uh, functioning. And so this is uh, one project from the 973 uh, program. I serve as uh, um, the principal uh, scientist. So, with this uh, proof concept, we are working very hard to make this uh, enzyme working in artemisinin uh, production strains. Now I want to tell you why we can uh, make uh, this success in the past. It's due to we have a, um, a strategy how to efficiently discover natural products from uh, microbes. So first we built a high quality marine microbial natural product library for screening. So we either do target-based or synergistic cell-based. After we find those uh, uh, good compound, oh, potentially could become a drug uh, to benefit human beings microbes usually generate a very few amount. So to break down the precisely regulated uh, system, we try to use a synthetic biology approach, um, you know, uh, to produce those uh, products in large volume. And this is the 973 project, uh, you know, uh, I serve as a, a principal scientist. So I will majorly talk about uh, the third aspect, but 
before that, I give you some background about how we built this uh, library. So we focus on the South China Sea region because this is one of the, the region in the world has most biodiversity. If I enlarge this uh, area, the red dots stands for the position where my students uh, take uh, ships, go to far and deep South China Sea, majorly collect the marine sediment along the slope. So you can see that's the ship they took uh, and the apparatus they use to collect marine sediments. And they can do simple experiment on the ship to isolate uh, novel uh, microbes. And through more than uh, decades of uh, work, we accumulated uh, a library which contains more than 100,000 microbial strains, uh, about half of them uh, actinomyces. So we screened, uh, we sequenced about 12,000 uh, actinomyces genomes. And using genome mining approach, we try to accelerate uh, the process to discover more novel structure and novel active uh, compounds. And in the past, we have also accumulated more than 100,000 fractionated samples. And currently we have more than 5,000 pure compounds. Uh, majority of them have novel uh, structures. So also in the past, we have published uh, uh, good papers in nature, biotechnology, nature communication, uh, et cetera. It is the quality of this uh, library really attracted international collaborations. So collectively, we use this library to look for novel drugs for cancer, malaria, flu, diabetes, even for uh, COVID-19, um, you know, uh, the, the uh, viral particles. So Professor Liu Xueting is responsible for this endeavor in our lab. With the samples from environmental uh, marine environments, we can do two prong approaches. One is we look for novel uh, strings by using novel um, media and conditions, okay? So people know majority of the microbes cannot be cultured. So we also use a, met a metagenomic approach to harvest the environmental DNA and put in a surrogate host, either E. coli or uh, actinomyces. In this way, we build a marine microbial library. And then we grow them under different physiological conditions um, and using chemical solvent to extract them, to get this uh, microbial crude extract library. Then we do bioassic added fractionation, purification, and structural elucidation. Not only we get a fractionation uh, library, also uh, we can harvest the pure compound library. With pure compounds in hand, we can do structure activity relationship and find the mode of actions uh, evaluate uh, the bioactivities of those uh, uh, potential drugs and test them in animal models, etc. cetera. Um, another approach is from this uh, genomic information, Professor Xue Ting Liu uh, spearheaded uh, the efforts you know, to use a um, genome mining approach to uh, look for the gene clusters responsible for novel secondary metabolites. Uh, usually those uh, clusters are silent because again, those microbes are very smart. They will not waste any energy or their precious food to produce unnecessary secondary metabolites. So we have to find the, 
mechanism and try to activate those uh, um, biosynthetic gene clusters. So we have some papers uh, submitted and uh, Dr. Zhang Jingyu and uh, Dr. Jiang Lan, Dr. Zhu Guoliang in the lab also use a, a similar approach, try to look for novel metabolites from uh, fungi. Especially they focus on an enzyme called uh, BFTPS, bifunctional terpene, terpenes, because those enzymes are responsible for, no, for the final cyclization uh, reaction of, uh, so usually they determine the novelty of the structures. So by using bioinformatic analysis from the genomes we have sequenced, they found some a novel BFTS and also finally found the novel structures of these uh, terpenes. Associate Professor Tang Gaoyi in the lab uh, also tried, tried hard to find the biosensors uh, which can detect the metabolites uh, during the fermentation uh, process. And with the quantification and precise measurement of those uh, uh, metabolites, it feedback uh, give us a clear picture about how to manipulate those strains in terms of uh, pathway, fluxes, uh, et cetera. Okay, I'll give you uh, a case study later about the Evermectin production. So in the library, we not only uh, recorded the uh, phenotype um, of those strains on uh, petri dishes also uh, under uh, microscopes. Okay, so we build this uh, LIMS system, lab information management system. We can link, you know, those uh, uh, final structures with uh, the detailed process as well as the original uh, student who made the first discovery. And by collaboration with uh, Professor Pierre Dorstein uh, in California, we developed a technology called uh, GNPS, uh, you know, to do efficient uh, dereplications. So by using this global natural product social molecular networking, we can quickly rule out the compounds people already reported in the literature and really enable our focus on those compounds may have structures novel, um, so make our process more efficient. So this technology is using uh, mass bags. Uh, we also collaborate with uh, Professor Ron Quinn in Australia to use uh, NMR uh, technology to do replications. Because we focus on the quality of this library so much, uh, we can identify and discover novel metabolites very quickly. And uh, some of our compounds have been highlighted in nature products reports as a hot of the press molecules. Particularly in 2013, uh, Professor Liu Xueting, you know, developed uh, originally isolate the novel structure of uh, abesimizin uh, derivatives. They showed uh, very good activity on tuberculosis and the paper published in Agravanti and with the collaboration with uh, uh, Rob Kappen. Okay. 
Now I want to switch gear to see with this uh, library in hand, how do we do screen to identify those uh, potential drugs? Uh, so due to time constraint, I will only talk about you know the unique approaches in the lab. So I, I like this uh, cartoon drawn by my student very much. You see, no matter how ugly we look like in the past, in ancient times, we can use some simple method to deal with uh, pathogens, uh, no matter they are uh, viral particles or um, microbial fungal strains. But right now, no matter how well we equipped ourselves and uh, how many fancy weapons we have, the pathogens, you know, um, developed much stronger and using this uh, shield called as a drug resistant uh, mechanisms. So how to deal with this uh, drug resistance? Uh, by collaboration with uh, Professor Fred, uh, Fred Osibel in Harvard University, we developed a screening platform using the worm uh, C. elegans. So, so look at this worm, actually it's only one millimeter in length, okay? But it has a conserved uh, function with the human beings. Uh, in the past, nine scientists using this uh, model mechanism received Nobel Prize. And here we try to use the um, infection model of this uh, um, uh, C. elegans. You can see if we cut this worm in half, uh, this is the picture. And if we challenge, uh, you know, we challenge this uh, worms with uh, human pathogen, uh, after 36 hours of treatment, the intestine uh, structure will come will be completely destroyed, but if you boil these those pathogens <coughs> at the same time of uh, treatment, the intestinal structure is uh, very healthy and intact. Okay, so those uh, worms usually can survive for two weeks. If we challenge them with uh, human pathogens, they died very fast. Okay, it's not because those uh, worm don't like those uh, um, uh, food. If you boil, you know, kill those pathogens, the survival profile just look like this. Okay, if you knock knock out those, uh, you know, virulence genes, the of those pathogen, the phenotype also look like this. So it's, it's due to the infection of those pathogens to the worm causes a lethal effect, okay? So with this phenotype, we can develop uh, you know, a genetic or a small molecule screening platform. So for the pot, you know, we seed equal amount of C. elegant worms in each 384 well in this uh, picture. So for the positive uh, control, we treat, you know, we first challenge those uh, worms with uh, human pathogen. And then for the positive control, we use antibiotic treatment, okay? Because they can kill those pathogen. So the worms actually are very healthy and happy. They swim around, it's very difficult to eyeball, you know, uh, the shape of those uh, worms, okay. But without treatment, just using the solvent control, the worm died very quickly. And if you use uh, uh, some chemical dyes, you can easily see, uh, you know, the stiffened body of those uh, uh, worm under uh, microscope, okay. So then we treat 
you know, this uh, wells of worms, infected worms with uh, different natural products or fractions. Just by eyeball, you can see those wells actually can rescue those infected worms. And then we do a secondary assay to see it's not due to the activity of those uh, uh, fraction or natural product kill pathogens directly. It's not due to the antibiotic mechanism. Okay, if if this is so, look at this uh, uh, compound. This compound. Okay. If we challenge those worms with uh, uh, this fungal, uh, this pathogen, human pathogen. And with only with this uh, compound, we can rescue those infected worms at concentration of one microgram per uh, meal. Okay, but if you only you, if you treat this compound with the pathogen itself, beyond this concentration, it cannot kill the pathogen. So, what could be the molecular mechanism of this uh, compound rescuing? the infected worms, either due to the uh, stimulated uh, immune response from the worm, or we shut down the interface between the worm and the pathogens. And indeed, we find the, the mechanism, you know, it's due to the novel mode of actions. Uh, due to time constraint, I will not uh, discuss much about this. Uh, instead, also talk about other novel screening platforms in the lab. And here is the synergistic screening platform to deal with uh, drug resistance uh, challenges. So we tr we first identify a drug either out of patent or abandoned in clinical trial because of insufficient safety profiles. For example, ketoconazole has a very good broad spectrums for antifungal treatment, but it's very toxic to human liver. So uh, instead of using the therapeutic dosage, we can um, quickly figure out a much reduced dosage, okay, um, to decrease its toxicity. But the activity will be compromised. So how to complement the activity loss? We try to look for a co-drug, either from traditional Chinese medicines, uh, natural parks, uh, a library we built, or approved drugs or synthetic libraries, okay? The phenotype we're looking for is synergy. One plus one generates far beyond two effects. Then we do secondary assays um, to confirm this activity and uh, put in uh, animal model test, uh, push into clinical trials. So we have published this uh, concept in uh, PNS. And uh, you can see ketoconazole with no the mode of action. It inhibits a key enzyme in a gastro biosynthesis, uh, the enzyme is called ERG11. So, a gastro is a key component in fungal cell membranes. Once it's limited, the membrane gets very leaky. So, inside stuff leaked out, the fungal cell died. As I mentioned, ketoconazole is very toxic to human liver. So, in this Synergistic screening, we use a very low dosage of ketoconazole and screen our library. So we have reported in the past, many compounds can show synergistic effect with ketoconazole and evermectin showed up in this way. Okay, so evermectin originally was identified as a pesticide. It kills worms. 
it never showed any activity on fungal cells and bacterial cells. And uh, we first identified those activities and later confirmed by other scientific groups in the world. So that means ivermectin must have some novel mode of actions, right? So more than 10 years ago, when I realized uh, this uh, novel activity, we start to work on this uh, second metabolize and try to increase the yield, uh, you know, to meet the great demand of human uh, clinical uh, therapeutics. Okay, now I want to switch gear to talk about the third aspect. How do we improve the yield of ivermectin by synthetic biology approaches? Here is the chemical structure of uh, ivermectin. And based on difference here, here, or here, we have eight different components. And B1A is the most active component of ivermectin to kill worms. Okay. So it is reported that uh, the compounds produced in China, ivermectin, helped to cure more than 20 million river blind disease patients in the past. Okay. So you can see this uh, river blind um, patients because when people are bite by the um, um, black fly, you know, the parasite can grow in the bloodstream. And when this get into eyes, it causes uh, blindness. Um, fortunately, Ivermectin's uh, derivative, Ivermectin, can completely uh, eradicate those uh, parasites. Um, so that's why Professor Satoshi Umra and William Campbell uh, received Nobel Prize for their discovery of uh, ivermectin and the ivermectins. So as I mentioned, we have a lot of patents developed on uh, ivermectin stream manipulation and bell process. Uh, so we established uh, Evermectin alliances for university enterprise collaborative uh, innovations. And collectively, we want to uh, identify more Evermectin analogs um, as uh, powerful drugs. So uh, we have some, we have uh, published a review article in the past to summarize uh, uh, the publications in uh, ivermectin production uh, field. So you can see the blue colors, uh, the solid blue color stands for papers published in science, SCI papers published. Uh, red stands for those papers published from China. Okay. Uh, those hollow uh, symbol represent the citations. Uh, the blue is from other countries, or red stands for China. You can see before 2000, the year 2000, no red color, you know, all the publications and uh, citations are from, you know, other countries. And during this decade, some paper published, and we have some citations. And during this decade, okay, this is a uh, uh, old data. You know, the, the literature, the, the papers published, and the citations already surpassed. You know, other countries combined. That's why you can see we lead this uh, a field. Uh, actually, two con um, prom uh, pronounced scientists contributed greatly. So these helped China to start from scratch and uh, increased the ivermectin production to about four gram per liter, okay? And Professor 
Shen Ying Chu, Professor Li Jilun received the national award in 1999 and 2006, uh, respectively. And when we realized the novel activity of Evermectins, we also jump into uh, these efforts. So collectively, with the help from uh, industrial uh, scientists, we increase the yield more than 1,000 fold and decrease um, the price more than 50 fold. Okay, so the current uh, yield is more than nine grams per liter. And with the help of the scientists, we receive a national award in 2016. So how could we do that? You know, uh, we, we first compare different uh, microbial drugs, Avermectin, mubomycin, and melimycin. You can see they, have, they share a common uh, structure. If we look at their genomic uh, makeup, indeed, they also share the similar biosynthetic gene clusters. To our surprise, there are only one regulator upstream. So what could be the upstream genes responsible for this uh, R gene? My PhD student, Joying, is very brave to take this uh, challenge. By using in vitro transcriptional assay and bioinformatic analysis, she figured out actually the heartbeat genes responsible for regulation of uh, uh, the R genes. So she made a heartbeat mutant library and transformed into the production strains. And uh, using this high throughput screening method, she can quickly figure out um, the, the strains which have elevated production of uh, Evermectins. Okay, then she extract those uh, genomic DNA and uh, especially uh, the mutant of uh, heart B genes and retransform into the production strains. And th at that time, almost all the transformants become high producers. That indicates those uh, mutation of heart B actually responsible for the final production of uh, Evermectins. And we also figured out in this uh, PS paper, the molecular mechanisms, why uh, the mutant can help increase the production. And we did not stop this string in the lab. We apply the technology in the local manufacturers. We can quickly increase uh, the yield from four gram per liter to uh, 6.3 gram per liters. So with uh, so this teach us a lesson, you know, any genes can upregulate uh, the R gene could lead to elevated production of Evermectins. So inspired by this uh, mechanism, we develop a biosensor using the promoter of the R gene to drive two reporter genes one is a ZRE, the other one is neomycin resistant genes. Then we mutagenize this uh, string. If any mutant can upregulate these two reporters, it will show up on the plate containing neomycin, okay? Because these resistant genes will get upregulated, right? Uh, so, that's a complex, the caveat is uh, there could be some resistant gene um, colonies also come out. To rule out these possibilities, we put the substrate of ZRE sprayed on the plate, the, on the petri dishes. You know, because of the elevated enzymatic activity, 
the colony will show um, yellow color. The yellow the color is, the better production of our marketing is. Okay, so in this way, about 99% of uh, yellow colonies will show as a high yield uh, producing strains and increase this uh, screening uh, selection method more than 10,000 fold. But so by using this uh, bio, um, bio sensors, we can quickly figure out uh, high producing strains. So we did not stop here. We asked the question why it give us, uh, you know, high production of evermectins. So based on the genome structure published by Professor Satoshi Omura, uh, we designed one restriction enzyme site uh, of uh, ASE1. So it can produce about 20 different bands after complete uh, enzymatic digestions. And then we ran a pulse field uh, electrophoresis uh, gel. You can see for the wild type strains, uh, you know, so here I show you, the evermectin biosynthetic gene clusters located in the biggest band, 1.4 megabytes uh, band, okay? So after the gel electrophoresis, you can see wild type string indeed contain this band, but for the high producer string, the band disappeared. Instead, two other bands showed up. Think about it, you know, those bands contained evermectin gene clusters and those, this one are high producers. So we just uh, hypothesis, maybe that's due to the amplification of these uh, gene clusters. Okay, indeed, when we do a thousand blot uh, analysis using the uh, AVC, you know, the key enzyme responsible for evermectin biosynthesis as a probe, we find out, you know, in, in wild type, there's only one band showed up, uh, but for high producers, they all contain a duplet of those uh, compounds, indicates the amplification of uh, evermectin gene clusters. Uh, when we have more money, we just uh, sequenced the complete genomes. And indeed, we found the evermectin gene cluster used to locate it at the left arm for the wild type strains, and it gets amplified in the right arm you know, uh, in the high producer strains. And we also figure out the molecular mechanisms. So using this mechanism, we can add uh, more copies into this string. But to our surprise, you know, two copies are enough. That's the maximum um, copies we can achieve high yield. Again, indicate the intelligence part of these strings you know, uh, they have to adapt to the uh, metabolic uh, fluxes in order to achieve the best yield uh, of evermectins, okay? Um, and from the genomic analysis, we also found some enzymes Professor Satoshi Omura uh, ignored at first place. For example, those two genes actually responsible for the efflux of evermectins you know, to push evermectins outside of uh, cell membranes and to decrease uh, the feedback inhibition. And this work was uh, by collaboration with uh, Dr. Bai Lin Quan and uh, Deng Zixin. And in our 973 project, um, Professor Tao Yong, Yang Keqian uh, spearheaded the equation you know, about seven molar of glucose can form one molar of uh, evermectins by using those cofactors and energy uh, sources. 
and uh, uh, precursors. So in the best scenario, um, the precursors should be in this ratio, five to seven to one ratios of methylmalonyl CoA, uh, malonyl CoA and uh, methylbutonyl uh, CoA respectively in order to have the best yield, productivity, and the tighter. Um, again, that's our 5M strategy, how to uh, get the best modeling, you know, guide us to do genetic engineering, synthetic biology approaches to get the best uh, yield, productivity, uh, etc. So look at uh, where those uh, precursors come from. So we can engineer and rewiring the pathways to get the best ratios. And this work was uh, done by collaboration with uh, uh, Sun Yap Li, uh, Tao Yong, Professor Fu Pengcheng, and uh, Professor Li Mingyu. Also by collaboration with Professor Lo Chunbo, we first uh, quanti quantitate the genetic elements in actinomyces. It's, an, it's a, not a trivial work because you can see those production strains, they, they become filaments and tangle together. Um, it's very difficult to quantitatively measure their cell mass, let alone the expression levels of those uh, genetic elements. Um, we use a flow cytometry approach. Actually, it's just like a single cell uh, technology um, using different promoters drive um, GFP, the green protein uh, as a reporter. So we can quantitate the um, intrinsic genetic elements in the actinomyces. In the past, people all think uh, you know, the ERMI promoter is the strongest uh, promoter in acting mysis uh, field. But after detailed quantification, uh, we identified, uh, you know, as well as the, with collaboration with uh, Professor Yang Keqian, this promoter actually showed the most dramatic effect. And if we manipulate, you know, the, uh, the key regions responsible for the transcriptional activity, we get a broader dynamic range of those uh, elements and show us, you know, uh, even better upregulation levels. So with these tools in hand, we can activate those uh, silent gene clusters. So we published this work in uh, PNS 2015 you know, I will not talk about the, the details, you know, only see we have these elements when we apply it in the actinomyces, uh, the evermectin producing strains. You know, originally it contains a lycopene gene cluster, but it never show the tomato color. But when we swap those genetic elements, you know, the lycopene level just keep shooting up. And this is the highest reported uh, uh, yield uh, from actinomyces to produce uh, lycopene. And the next year after we publish this paper, you know, uh, Andrew Longinski uh, published a Nature Product Reports review paper, you know, positively, you know, talk about our technology and the applications on uh, activation of those uh, silent gene clusters. So previously I worked in Chinese Academy of Sciences um, Institute of uh, Microbiology. And right now I serve as the director of uh, a national key laboratory for bioreactor engineering. The reason is uh, we have a very pronounced uh, scientist. His name is uh, uh, Professor Zhang Siliang is very good at uh, bioprocess engineering. Uh, initially, you can see 
in the shaker uh, flask, we can achieve this uh, yield. But when we first uh, apply this in fermenters, actually the yield decreased dramatically. But if we look at the uh, phenotype of those uh, microbes under uh, microscope, they are very different. The physiology uh, stage, very different. So by manipulate those uh, parameters in a bioreactor, Professor Zhang Siliang can, you know, achieve a better yield by optimize those conditions. And by collaboration with those uh, experts, you know, we collectively, we increase the yield more than a thousand fold. That's where um, uh, I mentioned before. So we summarize the strategy as a 5M strategy because each word start with the letter M. So first we do um, metalomic and you know, different uh, omics analysis. We do comparative uh, genomic, um, transcomic and the metabolomic proteomic analysis, try to find the key elements responsible for the final products. Then we build a mathematic model, guide us to do the third M, which is the manipulation uh, in the lab, in, you know, of those strings in the lab. And, the, you know, um, the detailed measurement of each uh, um, manipulation when we will feed back to the upstream to optimize our theory model um, until we have the best data to uh, correlate with uh, those uh, uh, models. Then we amplify those to the final M, which is the um, large scale uh, manufacturing. So in the 973 project, collectively, we developed this uh, super bug. It contains artificial elements which can respond to quorum sensing signals, okay? So only when the cell mass reach a, a high density, it can turn on um, avermectin biosynthetic gene clusters. At the same time, it also drives the efflux pumps. It can push out those uh, avermectin outside of uh, uh, cell membrane to release feedback inhibition. At the same time, we also you know, design some inhibitors. So the production of inhibitors can shut down the pathways uh, which compete with the avermectin uh, productions. So in this strategy, we make all the flux go to avermectin uh, productions. And for the remaining time, I would like to talk about uh, the work we recently published in Nature uh, Biotechnology. So it's uh, a common phenotype, you know, um, for actinomyces when uh, glucose, you know, the substrate uh, decrease, the substrate, you know, the biomass just keep increasing and reach a, a static level. And only at this time, the production of uh, second metabolites uh, kick out. So here we use the two different strains, the low producer and uh, high producer, which stands for these two strains uh, for actin rolling, okay, production. And you realize during the late fermentation stage, the production of actin rolling show dramatic difference while their cell mass did not and if you look at their substrate decrease level, actually uh, the high producer, you know, accumulate more uh, residual uh, glucose. So what could be the molecular switch responsible for this key step? We have very excellent uh, scientist, uh, Professor Wang Weishan and uh, his wife, uh, Dr. Li Shanshan, uh, working in the lab. So they use a uh, comparative metabolomic analysis 
identify, you know, just look at uh, the different pathways and actually identify the lipid pathway is uh, responsible for this uh, uh, phenotype. And later on, uh, they identified the triacylglycerol, the TAT is the, you know, key element to determine these uh, uh, precursors. They also did uh, quantitative analysis about the uh, um, fatty acid moiety of this TAG and uh, correlate well with the uh, uh, pathways. So, you know, look at uh, the, the process of the early stage, which is the biomass accumulation. The, and look at uh, those genes responsible for the uh, transcription um, of uh, fatty acid enzymes uh, here responsible for biosynthesis of fatty acids. You can see you know, during the early stage, the activity increased dramatically. You know, that's for the accumulation of uh, uh, biomass. And how about the fatty acid degradation enzymes? Their expression level only uh, reach a maximum during the late phase, which correlates with uh, secondary metabolized uh, productions. So actually, a tri triacylglycerol really link the primary metabolism with the polyketide biosynthesis. You see, you know, this is the substrate, the glucose decreasing level. And this is the secondary metabolize, the, you know, in this case, actin rolling uh, production level. So what could be the bridge linking, you know, the substrate exhaustion with the secondary metabolize um, production? This is the triacylglycerol. You know, we use uh, many different technology to confirm uh, this result. And uh, we further use a radioactive labeled substrate and um, um, mathematic modeling, you know, to um, in depth identify, you know, the quantitate, uh, the pathway and uh, the flux. To make a long story short, we find indeed uh, TEG is the precursor responsible for um, uh, the precursor for energy, for information uh, fluxes to determine the transition from primary fermentation stage to the secondary um, production uh, stage. So how to identify those key genes responsible for this uh, uh, process by doing a bioinformatic analysis, uh, we figure out uh, one gene, you know, uh, this gene is the key enzyme. Then we use uh, um, a genetic elements can responsible for a small molecule, the cumid. Um, so we can purposely make these genes express at the right time right level you know, using the right amount of uh, humid uh, regulation. Uh, so to make a long story short, by using this uh, uh, technology, we dramatically increase the, the production of uh, you know, different microbial drugs, no matter they are actinorodin, uh, jetomycin, oxytetracycline. Um, more importantly, in the Avermectin production, in the 360,000 liter fermenter, we increase the yield more than 50%. So that's why we can form this international Avermectin alliances. Um, and to publish this results in as an article 
in nature uh, biotechnology. So the strain did not stop in the lab. It's widely used in um, the local manufacturers. Because of the efficient production, it dramatically decreased the waste output. Also, since we decrease the, the price more than 50 fold, it can widely applied to um, a staple and uh, you know, economic crops. Also saved a large amount of starch consumptions because we use starch as a, a pre, you know, a feedstock for this uh, production. And just summarize uh, you know, the revenues uh, after our technology applied during this uh, time of period, it accumulated more than 1.8 billion uh, Chinese yuan. Um, so you can see the dramatic effect of a synthetic biology uh, approach. Uh, so since the raw material is so cheap, we also, uh, you know, it also contributes to the formulation of different uh, ivermectin uh, products. It further contributes to uh, another 6 billion yuan uh, market. So by working together with uh, Professor Zheng Jianting, we tried to, we tried and developed more analogs and derivatives of uh, ivermectin. Some of them even showed anton cancer activities. So in the case, you know, this is a, a great skeleton can produce more useful drugs for human beings. So I will not, due to time constraint, I will not talk about details. So here, just a summarize. So today, just uh, give you, I'll tell you a true story. First, you know, tell you a, a high quality um, natural product library. You know, this is the foundation where we can find uh, artemisinin and ivermectin uh, producing uh, strains. And second, how we use uh, 5M strategies to improve the yield of ivermectin. So in the past, the microbes, the production strain, just like a block, black box. You know, with the 5M strategies, we make it transparent. Okay, so we can figure out the biosynthetic and regulation pathways responsible for the final product. So in this way, we can purposely manipulate those uh, uh, pathways, enable a low producer to a high producer, make a quantum leap instead of um, incrementally uh, increased yield. So I want to thank people in the lab. They are the heroes really make this uh, happen. And for the top panel, those people very brief, you know, come with me from uh, Institute of Microbiology, Chinese Academy of Sciences to Shanghai. And we also want to thank uh, those people who did uh, sabbatical uh, work in our lab to help, you know, uh, the production and et cetera. So I also want to introduce, uh, 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 you know, this journal called the Synthetic and the System Biotechnology. Uh, even though it's only four years old, uh, last year we got the first size score, which is 3.63. Uh, this year we received uh, a size score 6.5 and uh, 6.9. So we, you know, I serve as the editor in chief while Professor Hal Arper, Professor Chen Guoqiang, Professor Tillman Weber, uh, sorry, as associate editors, you know, we want to, to develop this uh, um, journal as a, a flagship in the field of uh, synthetic biology. Um, recently, we just finished a, a special issue on cell-free system. Uh, those three professors serve as uh, uh, guest editors. So we have a very strong scientific advisory board. Uh, we also uh, look for more reviewers. So if you are interested in uh, this uh, journal, please submit your work. 
your best work. And um, and uh, when we call you for a you know, review um, tasks, please uh, uh, help us. So collectively, we hope we can uh, develop this uh, journal as a um, you know that's the best journal in our field. And uh, uh, with that said, I want to thank you very much for your attention and uh, looking forward for future collaborations. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Lixon, for the very informative lecture on intelligent biomanufacturing, a very specific reference to our McKins. And thank you for sharing your email ID to the participants uh, to address uh, any of their queries later. Uh, we just have time for a couple of questions. Uh, one is a very uh, general question, which is posed by the students. Um, you have an excellent lab and there are a lot of uh, doctorates and postdoctorates working. Our students would like to know what are the skill sets which you are looking out for, uh, for uh, working in your laboratory at both the doctoral as well as the postdoctoral levels. Oh, thank you very much for the question. Um, so, as I said, I have very uh, pleasant experiences by working with uh, Indian uh, PhD students and uh, uh, postdocs. Thank you so, very much. Sir. Yeah, particularly, we try to look for um, the candidates with uh, um, training background in uh, synthetic biology, genetic engineering. Um, Know, or, or natural product uh, isolation and purifications. So yes, sir. Please, uh, uh, you know, check our website and list yes. it here. Also, you know, if you're interested, please submit your uh, CV yes, to my sir. email account. Oh, that's great. That's great. So thank you so much. Uh, I hope uh, Kumar Shubham, Shrishti, many of the students wanted to know. I hope that answers your question. You can send your uh, CV. Uh, sir has uh, shared his email ID. And uh, we have a couple of more questions. Uh, a participant, uh, Dr. Arul Vasu, wants to know uh, whether the mode of action or activity uh, for uh, both the natural compounds as well as the synthetic compounds, whether it will be the same, the natural compounds as well as synthetics, which are produced through this pathway of bioengineering, whether the mode of action could be the same for both? Um, that's a great question. Um, I think the simple answer is uh, not necessarily not the same. Necessarily. Yeah. Yes. So, um, you know, we believe evolution power. So um, through, as I mentioned, through 3.5 billion years of evolution, uh, yes. microbial strains already um, evolved them well uh, yes. to, um, you know, um, survive peacefully with uh, the world, different uh, organisms. So the natural products produced by uh, those uh, microbes uh, already evolved to have uh, good functions. For okay. example, lavastandin, yes. originally uh, produced by uh, fung fungal strains, yes. but it showed good activity on decreasing uh, cholesterol levels. You know, what could be the um, correlation of yes. this uh, uh, compound with uh, the human uh, HMG CoA reductase? You know, it's difficult to explain, right? But the, you know, you have to believe the evolution power. Yes. Uh, so the synthetic compounds, you know, that's using the human intelligence, and uh, it has not gone through the evolution, evolution. process. Yes. So that's why we need uh, different um, bell assays, you know, to detect mm -hmm. the activity difference and mm -hmm. um, manipulate and optimize those uh, 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 synthetic compounds into compounds. good drugs. Mm -hmm. Uh, right, sir. Uh, another question from Dr. Kiran. How these large molecules will affect ADME properties, that is absorption, metabolism, and excretion? How mm. do these large molecules okay. affect yeah. these properties? Uh, you talk about uh, medium composition to optimize uh, the string growth and the bowel process. Is that <laughs> Hello? 
We talk about this uh, OSMAC t- technology, one strings, um, you know, with many different uh, uh, conditions. Actually, you know, microbes are very smart. They produce different metabolites by activating, you know, different gene clusters in response yes, to the medium compositions. So in the past, we have tried um, more than uh, dozens of for a book. medium composition Please and uh, um, my face is conditions to optimize uh, carbon <laughs> network and you know, different uh, nutrition resources. You know, the simple answer is really depends on the final product. You know how you can uh, design and optimize those yes. medium compositions. Correct. Yes. Um, there is one more uh, question here before I ask one of my own things, what I'm very interested to know. How are the synthetic biological methods used for uh, vaccine development? Because the world is today racing towards vaccines. So uh, yeah. it's a very general question okay, whether the synthetic biological methods can be used for any vaccine development. Yes, yes. Uh, the answer is yes, absolutely. Hmm? Um, so in our national uh, Dr. Jabez, kindly mute your mic, please. We oh, I'm here. sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Uh, okay. So in the national key laboratory for bioreactor engineering, yes. not only we focus on microbial fermentations, we further um, amplify our landscape into the big molecules like uh, uh, vaccines, antibodies. And even we try to use uh, uh, cell-based, you know, mammalian cell-based uh, culture uh, conditions for, um, you know, uh, different uh, anti-cancer uh, drugs. Um, so uh, for vaccines, you know, you, you're talking about different uh, type of vaccines, either uh, RNA-based or, you know, um, Yes. The big molecule based. Yes. So yes. we have to, you, know, you, you can also use these uh, 5M strategies, you know, to, to identify, you know, the key elements responsible for the final product. And by doing the mining, uh, modeling, manipulation, uh, measurement, you know, after the cycles of this uh, process and really uh, amplify to the large scale uh, manufacturing. Uh, indeed, right now the, the uh, vaccine in large scale all produced by uh, big fermenters. So, Doctor Panama, you are muted. So, the. You... Yes, sir. Um, so this is uh, one last question uh, from my side. Uh, what are the current products which are available uh, in the market, sir, which is uh, uh, this um, abemestin-based? Uh, you had a slide where they showed all the potential uh, products uh, where uh, uh, the molecule could be employed. Oh, so we have uh, many uh, products uh, in, the in the market. Pipeline, you know, yes. uh, in order to get a drug, we have to go through uh, four different clinical stages yes sir. Yeah. yeah yeah so so uh, it, it has not reached to the final market yet okay. when that happens we will we will let you know <laughs> oh yes sir. that's that would be really because there are a lot of uh, potential products which could be used and there were so many applications which i could see in one of these slides so we were just interested to know uh, what is the status. I'm sure some of the products would come out uh, in the market shortly. Thank you once again, sir, for a very excellent presentation. And thank you very much for sharing your uh, cell number as well as your email ID. I'm sure the students will be sending all their queries as well as uh, all their doubts to you for answer. And thank you once again, sir, for the very enlightening lecture. Uh, I just request you 